Hey everybody, so this week's show of Muses, Memoirs, and More, we had William Tukarski on as our special guest. He's an actor who does a lot of work with Adult Swim. He's well known as the serial killer in the Too Many Cooks, uh, the cult classic that everyone loves. He's also um, been in the last four seasons of Your Pretty Little Face is Going to Hell. He's been on movies with uh, Jumanji and uh, Catching Fire, the Hunger Games movies. So hope you enjoy it please like subscribe and uh, comment on the videos and you know let us know how you think about it thanks WRUULP Savannah Georgia 107.5 FM WRUU.org we are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul Welcome to Muses, Memoirs, and More, Savannah's show about authors, artists, and entertainers. I'm your host, Adam Messer. Today we have a very unique and special guest, William Tokarski. And I, I just want to read this bio to you because it's, it kind of encapsulates William and uh, what he's been doing and what he's known for, uh, but there's so much more um, to him. William Tukarski is a semi-popular sag aftra member. He fell into playing unique character actor roles late in his life. His cult following is for his killer role in Too Many Cooks 2014, and he lucked up on getting his first SAG contract in the Hunger Games Catching Fire 2013. He's in his fourth season as a recurring demon for Adult Swim, and he usually just lets his wardrobe do most of the acting. In films like Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle 2017, and Tragedy Girls 2017. Welcome, William, and thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me on. I love Savannah. Yeah, and, and we love you. I, I tell you what, I, I am a big fan. Um, I was, uh, was binge-watching the show... Um, your pretty little face is going to hell on Adult Swim. I was binge watching it, and uh, I have to say it's uh, it's it's definitely a different kind of show. That's what they're known for on Adult Swim. Different shows. I have a few more new ones coming down the pipeline too. Yeah. Um, let me ask you. You know, with getting into acting, you know, you you posted that you got into it late in life or later in life. What gave you the what gave you the idea or the bug to, to get into acting? I, I actually fell into it. <laughs> I, I, fell live into in a, okay. I live in a little community about uh, 30 minutes south of the Atlanta airport. I moved here when I retired. And uh, the city of Noonan, Georgia, and they film a lot of things here. They've got some great homes. The nickname of the city is um, uh, the City of Homes, and it is one of Georgia's film-friendly cities. They were filming a movie called Get Low with Robert Duvall and Bill Murray. Well, I'm a big Bill Murray and Robert Duvall fan, so yeah, me too. I'm going to go stand on the outside like everybody else and see them. Well, a little bit I know that the van pulls up and they're in and out. You never see anybody. But I spoke with some extras that were working there, and they said, yeah, we do this. We make a little money. They feed us. I said, man, that sounds like fun. So I started working as an extra. So, pretty much, it was just like you know an observation. You were like, "Hey, you know, this sounds like it'd be something cool." You were retired, and uh, just was it something at first? You just went to go kind of sightseeing, and you're like, "Hey, what's this all exactly. about?" Exactly, exactly. What's this all about? You know, I uh, a few months later, I did some films, and I booked to work Hunger Games: Catching Fire as an extra for six days. Oh wow. And the fifth day, I got back to holding and picked up my phone and looked, and the, the woman that's the casting director for Extras, uh, Rose Locke, left me a message and says, you have a speaking line with Jennifer Lawrence next week, if you want it. Oh, wow. Yeah. What did you think then? <laughs> well, but what I immediately thought is, how did someone fool me? Because, you know, I, I joke with people, and they joke with me. I figured immediately it was a prank that it really wasn't from Rose. But it turned out to be true. <laughs> and I had six little words. It's, the words I had were, you want to get him killed. That oh, was it. Wow. And the funny thing is, it has never, ma it never made the final cut. It's not there. 
Now, I, I made about $2,500 in two days doing it, but I loved the treatment. I'm sitting in this little uh, dressing room, and the production assistant knocks on the door first thing in the morning. I'm already dressed in costume. And they said, we're having a production meeting, breakfast meeting this morning. Would you like to join us with the director, Woody and Jennifer? <laughs> what? I bet you that was like such a great feeling. I was a mouse sitting in the corner listening and watching and learning, mm -hmm. mainly learning. And I, I really enjoyed the treatment. So at that point in time, I said, hell, man, I'm going to be an actor, you know. Mm -hmm. So I ran out, and you know I was going to join SAG after and all that. And, and, and the, the executive director of the local here uh, in Georgia, the Atlanta local, said to me, "I'll take your money, Billy, but but why don't you work some, get you some chops, get you some agent, and when you're ready, come back and see me." So that's what I did. I started doing student films and and uh, uh, free films, and you know. And I got bumped up again, and it was on your pretty faces going to hell. I was working as an extra and got bumped up to some speaking lines and stayed there ever since. So I started working, and I finally found an agent that would talk to me, and she says, hey, you don't know anything about acting. I says, that's true. She says, I'll tell you what. If you go to class, and she listed three different studios here in town, mm -hmm. and take, take acting class, I'll sign you. So I did it. And it's been fun ever since. You know, and that is really interesting the way that you put it. You know, it started off as a curiosity, and then, you know, you obviously looked into being a professional, you know, so joining the right associations and that kind of thing. And I love the fact that you were so open to, you know, even after being retired, you were so open to taking a class to learn your craft, learn more about, you know, what you need to do to be a better actor. Well, the unique thing with me is I, I don't really act. I just be myself. Right, right. So I, I, you know, it's, it's, I just learn more about uh, marks and eye lines and cues and that sort of thing. So what I do is pretty much my agent tries to find me things where I can just be myself. You know, and, and when I say I let the wardrobe do most of the acting, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty honest with it. Well, yeah, I noticed with the, the show, like your name is William in the um, My Pretty Little Face is Going to Hell, right? Correct. And I, I tell you what, your facial expressions in like the background of some of the scenes, and you know, we really we can't talk about a lot of the scenes on, on air because of the, the, the kind of nature it is with the show, but your expressions and your, um, I mean, sometimes that, you know, just like there's this one where they, they turned you into like a bodysuit, right? <laughs> the title of the episode is Healy. Yeah, and your your expressions though, I mean, they just add so much to the scene. You know, I think it's it's really cool because you know you've got background actors and you know you got different things, but some of the stuff is like you're not you're not necessarily talking, but you're right next to the the main actor, and you know your expressions kind of go along with what what this what's going on with the scene, and you know I think it's really cool the way that you do that. I think the camera just likes me. Is all it is. So with with it, um, <laughs> I, I tell you what, you um, you have one of those unique and it, like people see your face, right? And you just have this unique look to you. Well, uh, the people that did your pretty face is going to hell season one. They like me enough that the first demon you see in the very first episode is me. Is you, yeah. Correct, yeah. yeah. And it's like um, the gentleman that is one of the co-writers and directors, a gentleman by the name of Casper Kelly, uh, did a little video that Adult Swim has like 4 a.m. in the morning, something called infomercials. Mm -hmm. They're spoof infomercials. And he talked them into giving him one of those time periods to do something wild, and it was called... Too many cooks. Yeah, Have you seen it? yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to talk about that as well. So tell tell me more about that. How how did that evolve? It uh, like I say, um, there um, uh, uh, he he got a very small budget. Uh, there's almost seventy people on the show, and the vast majority of them are nothing but extras. And I mean, I had no dialogue in the show. Uh, too many cooks, but uh, they tell me I'm the lead. So. Um, 
what occurred was it played October, uh, the week before Halloween, 2014, four days, uh, four o'clock in the morning, uh, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Somebody bootlegged it to uh, YouTube Mm -hmm. Friday, and by the time they opened up at Adult Swim Monday morning, it had five million views. Oh, my gosh. Oh my my son, who was in the Coast Guard at the time in uh, California, someone forwarded it to him without having any idea of our relationship. <laughs> no way. <laughs> so, yeah, it was just one viral. So what happens is is no one knows my name, and in the show, I'm not given a credit. Every other person has an on-screen credit. So what happened was anybody that liked the show and wondered who the hell I was, had to go look me up on IMDb. My numbers went crazy on IMDb for for a short time, so it's opened a lot of doors for me. That's that's really incredible, and I, I do have the little um, vinyl pop figure of ah. too many cooks. <laughs> <laughs> My action figure. <laughs> yes, yes, and you know that uh, they didn't they make like a giant size one. Um, <clears throat> it's an interesting story. Um, uh, the uh, the action figures are made by Kid Robot, and they're sold in a blind box. And, uh, if you know what a blind box is, there's 18 different figures, and each one is all cartoon characters from Adult Swim. Mm-hmm. I'm the only live person, and each uh, character has a rarity, you know, like maybe 2 out of 24 or something. Mine is 1 out of 69, so it's become the collector item. Mm-hmm. I bought well, one on eBay. <laughs> and, and that's what you have to do, pretty much, uh, if you're smart. But uh, uh, the store where they had the premiere in Burbank, California, was a fan of me and a fan of, of, uh, of uh, Adult Swim, and they sell these kind of collectibles. So uh, Kid Robot set up out there to have the premiere of this, and the guy goes to cons all over the country and sets up and sells his memorabilia, so he had a bunch of frequent flyer mails and hotel points. And he says, come on out for the premiere. So I went out to California on a free ride with him and a free hotel stay for a long weekend and attended the premiere and did selfies and, you know, had just had a good time. But that's that's it, awesome. It's um, just neat. <coughs> we, um, we're, you're listening, if you're tuning in live right now, you're listening to uh, Muses, Memoirs, and More. I'm your host, Adam Messer, and our special to get our special guest today is William Tokarski. Um, you're listening to us on WRUULP Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul, and uh, William is uh, with us today, and he's an actor. Uh, he does a lot of work on. Uh, Adult Swim uh, products, and uh, he's been in uh, Jumanji, the new Jumanji, and uh, Hunger Games, and we've been talking a, a lot about you know how he just kind of stumbled or fell into uh, acting, right? Correct. Uh, a lot of people think I'm a character actor, and I'm not. I'm just a character that tries to act. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. I, you know what I love though too. Your your biggest hit is the Too Many Cooks, right? Correct. And, and you weren't even credited. Correct. But it just goes to show you that when you have something good and you're doing something good, people notice and they will look for you and they will find you if they like what you're doing. And you know, it just seemed—I'll be honest with you—it it, it seemed like a complete opposite role of who you are as a person. You know, I mean, <laughs> but you, you you pull it off. I mean, you really do. Like you, when the first when I first met you a couple of years back, you know, you very nice soft spoken you know just kind of like like the grandfatherly figure you know what i mean you there could be anybody's grandpa and then all of a sudden you know you got like this psycho maniacal <laughs> filler, filler, right, filler. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> how do you how do you um because you're, you're such a gentle person how do you get into that mindset for a role like that well, you see, I, I like I said before, I don't really act. Right. I just I, I I've been married for forty nine years, so I've learned to take direction well. Ah, okay, okay. So whatever 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 the director says he wants from me, I just try to do it. Um, and you're you're right. People don't know my name. I uh, uh, when I did Jumanji, I did a very nice scene with Jack Black, Kevin Hart, 
uh, Dwayne Johnson and uh, Karen Gillen, who is probably the biggest star in that group. But I'm sitting in on-set holding. And, you know, Jack's there and, and uh, Karen's there and a couple of others. And I'm what they consider a day player. I come to go do one day's work. And I'm sitting and there. Everybody's cordial. And um, some little girl that plays a high school student walked in the room, looked at me, and said, too many cooks, because that's what they recognize me from. They don't oh, know my wow. name. Right. Jack Black jumped up and said, you SOB, I knew I knew you from somewhere. Oh, what? Took a selfie with me, posted it on his Twitter and Facebook account, and it's got about 15,000, 20,000 likes. That's crazy. So, yeah, uh, it's just. It's just crazy, you know. I will go to a movie. I, I, I still occasionally like to go work as an extra. There was a lovely film filming down in Savannah called The Poison Rose. Mm -hmm. And I heard originally Forrest Whitaker was going to play the owner of a um, loony bin, an insane asylum. And I wanted to work with him. So I found out the lady was going to cast it, and I worked down there for a week with them. But usually any movie set that I get on, there's one fan of too many cooks that has to have a selfie. It, it might be the director. It might be the production assistant. It, you know, just people, some people that show clicked with. So it's just opened many, many doors for me. That's, that's really cool. I mean, it is definitely a cult uh, type movie. Um, and it's one of those things that it's become part of nerd culture, really. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of cool, man. I mean, you you know you have you have the stick that you know you you don't even have to really promote it or tell people about it. They just recognize your face. Correct. I uh, <clears throat> since that came out, I can't tell you how many strange little films I've done where 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 aspiring student filmmakers or people that are really into the horror genre making little horror films and things like that mm -hmm. have have sought me out to go do the film. Um, Amazon Pro Amazon has some streaming films on it, and I have one on there called The Good Die Young. Oh, and really? And if you're an Amazon Prime member, it's free. You can go, the go look young? at it. The Good Die Young. Film Noir, um, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, two undercover uh, narcotics cops in, in Atlanta have a... Uh, unfortunate thing happened where they kill somebody and someone has videoed it and somehow or other I'm the owner of the of a strip club and I have it and I'm going to blackmail them with it mm. and I really play off type in that role but that's something you might want to look at yeah I'll, I'll um when we do the podcast I'll put a link in there uh, to it as well uh because after we do the live show and then we do um it, it bar it's broadcasting live right now on WRU.org, but then I also put it on YouTube afterwards so people that can't listen to it live have a chance to listen later on. Very nice. Yeah, so I'll, I'll definitely put that in the... Because uh, I'm an Amazon Prime um, uh, member or whatever. Yes. And uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to watch that tonight. Yes. You know, I, I love the fact that you come to Savannah, too, because there there's so much going on in Savannah, and... That, that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about today was your story is almost like a perfect archetype of how people can get into the industry and just be available, do the work, and have opportunities open up because of the work ethic that you have. I totally agree with you. And, um, and I'll tell you the nice thing about this uh state and the people that are in it, everyone wants to help each other. A rising tide lifts all boats, and that's what we, we've been trying to do. Um, and I don't think that's the way it is in L.A. and New York. But, um, I enjoy it. I have fun with people, and people have fun with me, <clears throat> and I, 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 I like to, to share my knowledge. Uh, it, it makes up for my inability to set a good example. So it's <laughs> Come on, you're too hard on yourself there. <laughs> it's it's fun. It's, yeah. it's enjoyable. Um, last week, they're filming a, a little movie here called Palms with Diane Keaton. She is going to, uh, she's got um, uh, a cancer. 
So she decides to go to a retirement senior community. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with them to a degree. Mm -hmm. And so these bunch of old broads get together, and they're going to form a cheerleader squad. Uh, Rhea Perlman's in it, a few other neat people. But I saw the listing of it, and I asked my wife, I said, hey, you want to go bowling with Diane Keaton? And I've made enough friends in the industry where I find out who's casting it, and we go work as extras for a day. Two of us will go do and have dinner there with them and maybe stop somewhere on the way back and you know and you know you have fun with people i think i think that's a great you know honestly i think that's a great way to do it uh what do you say for those folks that they you know because i I think most of the people that i know they work a nine to five gig you know and that could be whatever um and they want to get into acting what do you say for those folks how you know how would you encourage them to to be able to pursue because you said you did student films, you did like free films and that kind of thing. Uh, I'll tell you what, what, um, what people have told me is that if you really want to be a good actor, and mm-hmm. I'm not a good actor by any stretch of the imagination, you do live community theater and you learn how to act. Mm. And then you transition to film. Film is so much different than live theater because you'll do the same thing 27 times where they shoot behind your shoulder, then they'll shoot behind the other guy's shoulder, then they'll do a two-shot of the both ends, and then they'll do a wide shot of the whole thing, and the editor puts it all together. When you go to classes and you learn, you learn how to act for the editor rather than trying to act for the stage, but acting is still acting. You've got to be able to convey what's going on there, whatever it might be. But uh, community theater is the first place to start, and Savannah has got a strong one. With SCAD right there, it's fantastic. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's students that are posting for um, extras all the time. And, and sometimes, I mean, I see quite a few lead roles that they post that are looking for you know, a certain uh, archetype uh-huh. or whatever. And uh, so I think there are a ton of opportunities here to get in involved in acting. And then there's so many major production uh films that are coming to savannah that they need extras and you know some of them they require you know the um credentials or yes yeah, some are are just like you know no experience needed you know and whatever whatever task you're given you just do it and if you're good at what you do they won't ignore you forever i've got bumped three times on three different shows where i've been given lines and, and a sad contract so it's just, you know, keep your mouth shut, listen, and do as you're told, and make friends. Yeah. That's great advice. That is really, I think, great advice. With, um, with your career, it's, it's still relatively new, right? Oh, yes. I mean, um, um, people ask me how long you've been acting, and I say, I've been acting all my life. I've just gotten paid for it for the last five years. <laughs> right. But um, what... <laughs> what um, what I find is, is, is you just try to get on camera whenever you can. Um, like I said, I started doing a lot of student films. Last month, uh, SCAD has a campus up here in Atlanta. Last month, I just did a SCAD uh, student thesis film. So it, I, play, I played a, a, a racist uh, 1960s store owner. Uh, interesting little film. It should be out. It's called Through Her Eye. I think they just wrapped it. Their eyes, okay. But Uh, it's, you know, there's just so many opportunities to get on film. And once you get on film, most people will share your little clips of what you're doing. So you create yourself a little reel, and then you go to the breakdown services, and you join them, and you start self-submitting for little film. Some of them will pay, some of them won't. Yeah. With that, you also have the availability with your, you know, cell phone to do just about anything with it. Oh gosh, yes. There, there are film festivals out there for uh, films made with uh, I- iPhones. You know, in other words, you make the whole film with an iPhone. Yeah, and you can be your own writer, producer, director, actor. You can be an all-in-one, you know, if you Correct. want to. I think that that's a big difference between even 10 years ago and now. You know. I, will, I will say something I have noticed. Um, I have a little connection with SCAD right now. 
My son is a retired uh, military, mm -hmm. and he's attending SCAD right now. That's why I go to Savannah a lot, because I can stay with him. Oh, nice. But my son is attending there. Uh, basically, he's studying furniture design, but he's a little bit of a stage actor himself. So I've, I've met a lot of people and done a lot of things with them. But uh, what I have found that most talented filmmakers will attend a school like SCAD or a Tisch in New York or Columbia in Chicago and will attend a few years and learn and then they will go out and start making films. Right. And and ma making these little shorts and you know and and eventually work to the point where where they will uh, will uh, eventually work their way into uh mainstream blockbuster films. Yeah, and I think uh with uh, with that there's so many opportunities out there. My friend and I were talking about um, the writing cast of, of these big Marvel movies. You know, you might see 40 or 50 names. Uh, yeah. And so there's so many opportunities out there, not just for big studios, but the smaller studios, indie films, uh, student films, obviously. You have, th there's, if you want to do it, this is probably, I think, the best time that we've ever had in filmmaking to be able to get involved and actually do it. Anything that you want to do, writing, producing, you know, if you want to be a camera person or whatever, acting, um, I think you have such an opportunity now, and it's just going to keep getting better. And with, with things like Uber and Lyft mm -hmm. and, and working as waiter or waitress, people will do that for their day job and then will work as they can to build a reputation on both sides of the camera and then eventually give up their day job and work full-time. <clears throat> I'm extremely blessed because I've got a pension. I'm one of the, the last of the... I'm 70 years old. If you, I don't know if you knew that or not. No, I didn't. I, I didn't actually know that. So I'm one of the, uh, the last the baby boomers who have a real-life pension as well as Social Security. So, I mean, I'm, and, and I'm not rich, but I... A friend of mine, Eddie Pepitone, who works on... Uh, your pretty face is going to hell, says to me, well, Billy, then it's all gravy for you. I said, yes, it is. <laughs> um, I'm, I, uh, I got to work for a week on Jumanji, and I really loved it, had a ball. Uh, and the money I made off of that, I just signed a check over to my wife and says, uh, you know them hardwood floors and new carpet you wanted? We got them. So it's, it's fun. It's nice. That's that's really cool. I know uh, for most of the folks, and you know, that is really neat that you have a pension because even a lot of the baby boomers that I know, uh, I'm a Gen X person, so I'm like 42. So um, I'm the generation right behind y'all. And But a lot of the baby boomers I know, um, yeah, that's really kind of like the last of the um, – the, the pensioners and you have you know you, you do have union trades and stuff like that today that there are um, still but there are a lot less opportunities now for people to get in fewer and, and fewer opportunities yeah yeah and uh, even even still I think in the um, I don't want to say commercial but uh, in your uh, corporate America type setting um, there's even less. You know, people oh, yeah. have 401ks. They often change jobs every couple of years. So, you know, and I think I think that's something too with any artist, any creative person. They sometimes they they get that imposter syndrome. They feel like, oh, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not really an artist, or I'm not really this, or really that. And I love that your story is you just kept doing the work. You show up, you do what they ask you to do, you make friends, and then you just keep progressing. I just, uh, I, uh, another thing I do is I audit a lot of classes. Okay. Any, anywhere there are acting classes in any town, the reputable studios will let you come and audit their class where you sit in and monitor a class, basically. Sometimes they'll let you play with them. And you get to learn and find out where you fit in. And I just audited a class last, uh, last week. It was in, um, um, Atlanta, uh, the, 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 the creative is what it was called, and they talked about having classes for actors over 50. Oh, and I wow. thought that interested me. But one of the, the, one of the days is spent on the business of acting, how to you know, do the money end of it so you're not starving, so you uh, uh, know that there's a pension. And SAG-AFTRA does have a pension. It's my goal someday when I'm about 
85 to take that pension from SAG after as well. Oh, nice. Uh, William, can you hold on for us while we sure. do the uh, station break? Thank you. For 10 days in August, WRUU 107.5 FM will be auctioning off more than $3,000 worth of fun and unique items to raise money to support this nonprofit community radio station. WRUU radio hosts have worked hard to gather items to delight and dazzle. From August 11th through the 21st, you can bid on gift cards and certificates for great local restaurants and bars, art, theater, fitness, and much more. Browse the catalog today. Every purchase will help WRUU continue to bring you Savannah's most diverse and passionate radio programming. Look for the Summer Business Auction at WRUU.org. The Ogeechee River Keeper offers monthly canoe and kayak excursions in all of the river's watershed through October. This year's paddles will take adventurers from the river's twisting and turning northern sections near Wadley, west of Augusta, to broad coastal stretches near Harris Neck, south of Savannah. The trips range from beginner to intermediate in difficulty. Boat rental is available. For more information, visit ogeechiriverkeeper.org. WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. Tune in Saturdays at 3 p.m. to Muses, Memoirs, and More, your show about authors, artists, and entertainers with your host, Adam Messer. You're listening to WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. And welcome back, everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in today and listening to us. Uh, I'm Adam Messer, and today our special guest is William Tokarski. He is an actor and um, pensioner. We just found that out, right? Uh, <laughs> but William, I love your story, and, and just to, I just want to, for anybody that might be tuning in right now, I just want to kind of give them like a back uh, back story. So you started acting, well, you've been like you said, you've been acting all your life. You just started getting paid for it the last five years. Um, I love that, and you uh, you have a good, strong work ethic. You say you know to show up, do what the directors ask you to do, make friends, and um, you know things will happen. Um, you also when you first got in, you were going to join SAG-AFTRA, but um, your, uh, I guess the local union administrator said, hey, you know, get some chops, get some work under your, your feet first and under your belt. And, uh, and then you did. And then you worked enough that, you know, you work with an agent that uh, said, I'll work with you if you do these acting classes first. And you did it. And I think that is a great example of how one can not only get into acting, but also to be a professional uh, with that talent and that craft. Because people that are amateurish, and I'm, I'm not knocking anybody for being amateur. Amateur just means that you're a student. The word actually means you're a student, right? But if you're if you're just a student and you don't take the craft professionally, you don't do the things like acting classes. You don't do the things like like you said before the break, you know, going and auditing these classes, you don't, you know, you, you don't do exactly what the director asks you to do. You know, and that's, that's the difference between, I think, a professional and an amateur. And I, I really admire the, um, you know, your work ethic. And I really admire, you know, your, your story just kind of just flows right through. The, the other big part for me is something called shameless self-promotion. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, people, I mean, big actors and actresses have someone on a payroll that does, uh, does publicity for them, a publicist. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I believe you have to do that, too. You have to be active in social media. Well, um, you're doing the show today, and, you know, correct. this is, I mean, for me, this is just so incredible, you know, to have you on the show. And it's an opportunity for me to have you as a special guest for, you know, the fans like myself. And it's also uh, an opportunity for you to be able to talk about your work. Yes. One of my favorite acting instructors, a gentleman by the name of P. David Miller, told me, he said, if, to get booked on acting roles, it's not who you know. It's who knows you. Nice. So, 
and it's true. Um, I'm, I'm just starting to get into doing commercials. Um, and uh, at one time in Georgia, there was about the only thing you did here locally was commercials. And union commercials are rare. Um, it, it were rare at one point in time. I think uh, they're, they're getting a little, uh, 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 with the, the film industry growing in here, they're bringing some of those in as well. Um, but <clears throat> commercials, people are going to book you based upon your, your um, 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 uh, yes. notoriety, how, how well you're known. They like that for commercials. They like to, your face to be identified with a product like flow on the insurance commercial. Right, but, right. You know, so that's what they look for. So, uh, uh, and when you audition for a commercial, not only are you auditioning in front of the director, and uh, the uh, uh, casting director, you're also auditioning in front of the ad agency and the people that control the product. Um, one of my fun things is a Georgia Lottery commercial. I, I don't know if you've seen it or not. No, I haven't. But I auditioned for it, for the lead role, and didn't get it. Mm. But they invited me back and said, would you like to be an extra? Now, this is a SAG commercial, so it paid like $300 for eight hours on this commercial, which was great. Um, it is the Mad Max Thunderdome kind of commercial where the goat... Oh, uh, I did see that. I did yeah. see that one. I, I didn't realize that you were in, in, in that. I'll have to go back and watch it again. My face is just flashed on the screen for about two seconds. I was originally hired as a background person. Someone said to me, well, you should have been paid... Uh, as a principal actor on that. Because if you look at, like, Viagra commercials, guys don't say anything. It's just people on camera. Right. So I called the local, and they said, well, we'll, we'll put an appeal in on for you. And uh, the union turned that $400 day into a $4,000 day. Oh, well, nice. Now, so, co- I, yeah. d- just to just to kind of clarify for folks, <coughs> excuse me, when you first get into acting, like we were talking earlier uh, you did a lot of free work. You did a lot of like collaborations and things like that. Oh yes. So I, I don't want people to, like, listening to kind of get a misconception that you know you're going to start off um, because it might happen. There might be like a one in a million chance that you know they get cast for a principal role or something like that. But more than likely, they're going to be doing background work and extra work. And you do background work to learn the business. Right, and the pay for background work is. You know, Usually it's pretty, sixty-four dollars a day. Right, I was gonna say eight for eight, right? Yeah. So, um, but that, I just wanted to throw that out there to people because you know, something the the pie in the sky type thing. You know, you this is a reality because you're actually doing it. Um, but I don't want people thinking that that's the way it just jumps off right off the bat because you know. Well, you I, what I have found more first. than anything, I don't care how good you are mm-hmm. until you are known that you are good. You're not gonna you're not gonna find work. I've been in acting classes with great actors, so much better than me, mm-hmm. and I call them class actors because they can act, but they've never gotten a break. Yeah. Whereas I came out of the gates and got a break with too many cooks. Well, and and. and you know that has to do with I think being in the right place at the right time, and like oh, you said, yeah. you know it's not who you know, it's who knows you. But then Correct. also, I mean, I really think that the backbone of it is is your work ethic. You know, I think it's just like you said, you show up, you do what the director asks you to do, make friends. I have a, I have a lovely little film on Hulu right now called Tragedy Girls. It stars some big stars. It's got Craig Robinson, Josh Hutcherson. Brianna Hildeberg, um, uh, Alexis, uh, blah, 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 I forget Alexis' last name. But it's, a, it's a, a horror film about two young girls that become high school slashers and social media. Mm. All right, so here's the story. <clears throat> I filmed this strange little film called Gwilliam, with a G, Gwilliam. It is weird. I can't describe it on this show, but um, the filmmaker that made it was a gentleman called Brian Lalano. And right now, he doesn't beg for money to make films. He just puts his films up where you've got to go pay two bucks to watch him on Vimeo if you, uh, if you want to see Gwilym. Um And that's how he funds his next films, which is a great idea. But I made this strange little film for him. And about three years ago, uh, a writer and director by, a writer by the name of Chris Hill and a director by the name of Tyler McIntyre 
had some strange little film. I forget the name of it. It was playing in Canada. They, these are Canadians. Uh, it was playing in Canada at a uh, uh, underground film festival. And when they have a feature, they usually have a short open it. So my little short opened that film. And oh, it's wow. a strange little film, okay? Now, fast forward two years later, they're filming this feature called Tragedy Girls in Kentucky. <clears throat> they're sitting around a production table, and they're going to cast some of their day players. And they said, we need a creepy janitor. So one of the people sitting at the table was a person that cast me as extras for, for, uh, for a while. And he says, how about this guy? Hmm. And called up my IMDb profile on a laptop, slid it across the table. They looked at it, and they both looked at each other and says, we know him. Book him. Oh, wow. No audition. I mean, they didn't have a whole lot of dialogue in the show, but it's, it's funny, the, the bit that I do. Uh, so there I am two weeks later with an airplane ticket to Kentucky, and I spent a week in Kentucky working on this film. That's that's just really interesting how things can unravel, you know. Right. Like you said exactly. earlier, it's it's who knows you. Exactly. So you, you you just have to network with people, make friends, do your job, and I found don't bitch, just do what what they ask you to do and smile. I think uh, I think you just hit on a really good point there, being likable, and uh, and this goes across anything. I don't care if it's you know, your day job or, you know, your night job or your third job, you know, whatever. Being likable, being agreeable, you know, it goes a long way. Doing the work, you know, showing up, doing the work, and then and just being likable. You know, don't complain. Complaining, what does it do for you, really? Does it really mm -hmm. make anything better? <clears throat> and, and for people that have never acted, it's very boring. I mean, you're there for 14 hours, and you've probably got 30 minutes of high intensity. The rest of the time, you're sitting around while they're setting up and adjusting lighting, and, and you know, it's, it's that sort of thing. There's, there's not a whole lot of glamour in the actual making. I think the glamour is more in the afterwards or, you know, um, film festivals, things like that. I think and I went, I've gone to South by Southwest in Austin, Texas twice, and I just love that atmosphere. I think that's a good point that you make too. Uh, in this show, we talk about um, the nuts and bolts of the creative process. You know, so we talk, you know, talk to authors and artists and entertainers, and that's one of the things that I love sharing with other people is how are you able to move, you know, from not knowing where you want to go with it, you just have this spark, you know, of ambition, to being able to actually do it, and. You know, talking about, you know, like, okay, hey, you know, you, most of the time you're going to be sitting around and you're going to have to wait, you know, it's like you have to hurry up and wait <laughs> for the action, exactly. you know, but being ready to go at a, you know, a second's notice, uh, I think that's a critical part too. You have to be willing to, you know, do what they want you to do, like right when they need you to do it. So but there are so many opportunities in, 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 in Savannah with, with SCAD down there. I mm -hmm. mean, it's just, fantastic and they have one of the greatest film festivals that there is down there yeah i know that uh, they have a lot of um, big names that come into town and so um if you're just now tuning in you're listening to muses memoirs and more i'm your host adam messer and you're listening to us on wruulp savannah georgia 107.5 fm wruu.org we are Savannah Soundings, community radio with Global Soul, and our special guest today is William Tokarski. Uh, for those of you who are adult, uh, adult Swim fans, um, or even not necessarily, you don't even necessarily have to have watched Adult Swim, but it kind of helps. Um, the Too Many Cooks guy, <laughs> um, like you said, you weren't even credited for that role, but you know it just kind of blew up and went viral and had five million hits uh, overnight, pretty much. And uh, you've been in the your pretty little face is going to hell. Show for like what the last four seasons, right? Yes. So. And since you're a fan, I'll share some good stuff with you. Yeah, let's let's talk about that because we have about ten minutes left of the show. So any kind of you know cool little stuff that you could share with us and the you know, especially for the fans out there. Do you know who George Went is? Ah, uh, no, unfortunately. Norm on Cheers. There we go. Yes, I do. 
George, uh, uh, John Amos, black guy from, I think it was family, family something or other, uh, recognizable people. There's an episode coming up on season four called The Poor, with a P, The Poor Horseman of the Apocalypse. Okay. And George Went plays Famine. Oh, wow. And I'll just leave it go at that. <laughs> okay, okay. So they have, they have some interesting, interesting uh, episodes coming up. They, uh, the, that, that show keeps getting better, better, and better. Um, I like the one episode. The, there was one episode where the guy that um, is uh, basically plays like he's one of the tortured souls. Eddie Pepitone. Right. He got promoted to being a demon, right? Yeah. And we um, I put think some the guy. Horns on his head. And I feel bad because I know the guy, uh, he plays uh, Master Shake's voice. Um, yes. Dan, um, is it Dane? Dana Snyder. Yes, Dana Snyder. Thank you. I couldn't think of his name, but he got demoted to being the tortured soul, right? And Correct. I thought it was so funny because it was almost like an outro, but it wasn't. They included it in the show. He was like, you know, the. <laughs> He was like, I don't want to wear this red makeup anymore. <laughs> and then you see all the scenes where, you know, the agents talking to the directors and stuff. And then all of a sudden, you know, they, they kind of flip flop back again. And he's not having to wear the, you know, that red makeup and all the other stuff. <laughs> so I thought that was, I thought it was kind of a neat little, uh, I don't know if it was a spoof on the industry or. If there's it, a lot of Easter eggs in there. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I thought that was kind of cool. And, and these little quirky shows, they, they, you know, they're. I mean, they really are, really are geared towards like nerd culture and stuff like that, and you know, the kind the of strength of that show is in its writing. Yeah, and they really have some great. Uh, the writer, uh, uh, it's a pair. It's uh, Dave Willis and Casper Kelly, write and direct, uh, and uh, they just collaborate. Uh, you know, I sat in on an editing session one time, and you know, uh, you do a lot of take and they try to put it together. So there's the editor on a big screen. And in the room are two or three couches. And everybody's sitting in a couch, and people are throwing ideas back and forth. And Do you remember the movie, um, uh, um, The Internship, no. where they had uh, uh, the offices with the pool table and pinball machines and all that? Mm -hmm. That's the way Adult Swim is. Oh, okay, okay. In you fact, on, on the set, of uh, your pretty face is going hell where we film in the studio. They've got a pinball machine for us to play while we're not busy. Oh, nice! You so know, it's, you know, it's it's creative mind. What about what about too many cooks on Rick and Morty? What would that um, be like? I I um, I'm familiar with Rick and Morty, but I'm not a regular follower. Okay, so uh, just a breakdown, uh, super quick. It's it's just a it's a wildly popular uh, yes. sci-fi cartoon show, and Rick is the grand grandfather, and he's kind of like this. Um, it's it's almost like uh, Back to the Future meets. Um, <laughs> Uh, I don't know what it would mean, but he's a crazy scientist, and they they do all these portal traveling to different universes and things like that. Yeah. And um, but uh, that would be, I think that would be a really neat crossover. Like you know, they they uh, portal into a dimension where it's too many cooks dimension. You know that what I mean? That would be interesting. That would really be interesting. <laughs> and um, uh, have like an epic battle between you know you and and Rick or something like that. I don't know. Too many cooks did have a sequel. Uh, Dad's Garage. Are you familiar with them in Atlanta? No. It's an improv house. Okay. Where they, they own their own building and they have uh, comedy skits and improvs. And about a third of the people that were on the show, for, uh, just about everybody with lines was from Dad's Garage. Um, Dad's Garage did a fundraiser at um, the Fabulous Fox in downtown Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of the fundraiser was a 10-minute skit called Too Many Cooks the Musical. Oh, wow. And they invited me to reprise my role uh, as, as, a, uh, as a character in the musical. And uh, we performed um, at the Fox and then had two shows before that in Little Five Points, which uh, had a studio there, a uh, theater there called um, Seven Stages, where they basically put the show on twice 
as a dress rehearsal before they did it in the Fox. If that makes sense to you. Mm-hmm. Okay. But at any rate, um, uh, the actual show had uh, a sequel, which very few people know about. Oh, that's that's really cool. Is that available like on YouTube or something that people watch? No or? one ever taped it. That oh I know gosh! Of. Uh, I, I I well, you know, it was a live audience. It was a one-time thing, and it it. Uh, well, luckily it we there. have but you to tell us. Let about me that. say awesome. this: if you're an Adult Swim fan, there is a new program that's going to have ten episodes called Tropical Cocktails. Okay. And the pilot was actually filmed on Tybee Island. Oh, okay. And I actually got to play in the pilot. Uh, wow. I won't say any more. Um, when, when is it going to air? Do you know? Well, the pilot aired, and it's on uh, their website where you can go look at it, Tropical okay. Cocktails. Tropical Cocktails. But okay. right, right now, um, they just filmed 10 episodes, and I know they filmed the exterior locations this time in um, um, uh, the Dominican Republic instead of Tybee. But they filmed all the interiors in the uh, studio, but I did not make it into that one. But it is a director out of England called Jim Hosking, who is best known for a strange little film called The Greasy Strangler. Okay. But that is coming down the road. And they've got two or three other uh, pilots that I can't mention their names, that they're looking at to that I've actually auditioned for. I don't know if I'm going to get there or not. But um, so, uh, Adult Swim is going to try to do a little more live action to supplement their uh, animated stuff. Okay. Yeah. Well, it seems like uh, some of the shows that they've had, <coughs> excuse me, that are um, live action have a, a pretty good following. So I don't I don't see why uh, they wouldn't want to do more of that. So, it's pretty cool. The neat, the neat thing about this is, you know, for my age and my demographics and my friends, the people I go to my silver sneakers exercise class has no idea. <laughs> yeah, and but, it, it wouldn't be a, a reference for them either. It's like, no, you know. Not at all. But, but the little girl that teaches the class won't be alone in the room with me. <laughs> That's because of the role, right? Yeah. <laughs> of course. That's crazy. Um, we've got about two minutes uh, before we wrap up the show, William. I, I really appreciate you being on. Do you have any um, any other, I mean, you've shared so much with us today. Do you have any other um, words of wisdom or advice for a, an aspiring uh, actor or anybody that wants to get in, into the production side of, um, of filmmaking? Get on set. Get on camera. I, I try to get on camera every day. I I almost drained my bank account trying to get on the ATM camera. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Well, I, I really appreciate you uh, you being on with us today. Um, you know, so we've been talking about your career and how you started, and you know, your work ethic, and you know, just a great culmination of different things. And you know, like you said, you stumbled into it, but you've you've really done the work to stay in it. And I think that's a, that's a, a nice thing to share with other people because there are a lot of opportunities out there, especially like you said, you started with, you know, student films and free films. And then, you know, you worked your way into different roles and you know, you've had some roles that you were cast just because they knew your face. Um, and I, I think that's really an interesting thing to share with people because it is doable. You know, I think people have to do the work, you know, like you said, they have to, they have to show up and, and do what the director asks them to do. They have to be likable and not complain, and uh, just just keep trying and keep working at it, right? Correct. My my wife says I'm very trying. <laughs> That's All right, awesome. sir. I thank you so much for inviting me. Well, thank you very much, William, uh, for being with us. And um, like I said, I'll I'll send you the uh, the link for when it's on the podcast. Um, but I really appreciate you being on today, especially being a fan myself. I think it's really cool, um, you know, to have the opportunity to talk with you. And, uh, you know, you're in these productions of things that I actually enjoy as a, as a fan. So uh, thanks a lot for being on with us. Thank you. My pleasure.